year, 1944. The 2nd Canadian Division returns in triumph to the scene of their martyrdom. Storming up the long, straight road to the town, they thirst to settle the score with the German garrison. The garrison has fled, scurrying like rats east along the coast road. In their earlier crusade, it was hot lead which greeted the Canadians' arrival. Now, it is flowers. Famous Canadian regiments marched past their chief, General Cuillard. Cuillard's appearance at the ceremony was a far more complicated event than it is presented here. Cuillard had been ordered by his superior, Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, to attend a meeting at the 2nd Army Headquarters, which was due to take place the day after the ceremony seen here was conducted. Cuillard believed that he should attend the ceremony, as he was the commander of the 1st Canadian Army, and told Montgomery the same. Cuillard received no reply and continued on with his plans for the ceremony. Montgomery had sent word, but did not arrive in time. Montgomery wanted Criard removed as commander of the 1st Canadian Army for his disobedience. Criard threatened to take the matter to the Canadian government, and Montgomery backed off. Criard made the right decision to attend the ceremony. It is often claimed that Criard did what his British superiors told him to do, no matter what, for the sake of his career. The event at Dieppe in September 1944 demonstrates this was not always the case with Criard. The Royal Regiment of Canada, the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry, the Essex Scottish, Returning also to the scene of their grim baptism of fire are the Cameron Highlanders, the South Saskatchewan Regiment, the Fusiliers Montreal, the Black Watch, the Calgary Highlanders, the Regiment Masonnette, and the Toronto Scottish. Still standing is the cenotaph erected to the memory of our last war dead. In a peaceful graveyard are 855 crosses, row on row. During the occupation, they were erected by Frenchmen of Dieppe to mark the resting place of the gallant Canadians who fell in the Dieppe raid. Their memory is forever as fresh as the flowers brought by kind hands to their graves. The whole town turns out to pay tribute to their memory. General Creera reads the address at a service of commemoration. Glory and honor to these men from across the sea who gave their all that the torch of liberty might shine again. Comrades who kindled the light, which never again will be quenched by the tyrant's heels. 